Hi everyone, my name is Mark Mullikins from Big Mountain Studio, and today's tip has to do with storyboard constraints. And I know I've been putting this off for a while, and a lot of people have been asking me about this. Well, I've been putting it off because it's such a big subject, and there's so much to it that it's hard to cover in one storyboard tip, which I usually short. So what I did is I boiled it down to two main principles that I want to teach you. And these two main principles should help you out with maybe 75 to 80% of the problems that you guys have with the constraints. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to be working with this application right here. And it's pretty simple. There's only a couple of labels, there's a button, and there's actually a, a text field right here. This is a text field. If you click it again, it'll collapse. And then there's another label down here. We're not going to worry about these two things right here. They already have constraints because I needed constraints to make this animation work. Okay, so let's take a look. I have the assistant editor turned on and in the assistant editor you guys probably know this but down at the bottom there's a preview so you can click on that and you can get a preview of what your screen is going to look like on different devices you can add more screens by coming down here and cl clicking the plus and choosing your device so here on the left hand side I have the iPhone 7 and over here I have an SE and a 7 plus and you can see the problems here there are no constraints on the labels so the labels, you know, they're getting cut off in some cases. And here it's like too far in. And look at the image too. Basically this iPhone 7 is how I want it to look on all devices. So notice the tree kind of goes up and follows, uh, you know, the left-hand margin, goes up to the top. And notice the spacing over on the right-hand side there. Well, here the branch is getting cut off. and Here there's too much space. And also down here the image is, gets, is getting cut off. So we want to fix that. And the two main principles that we're going to use, well, the first one that I'm going to teach you is every control needs a location and a size. Or you can say every control needs a position and a size. So it needs to know where it is located on the storyboard, and it needs to know how big it should be. So that's how we're going to fix a couple of these problems that we have here. And what I'm going to do is uh, select this first label. And I'm going to come down here to set some constraints. So let's think about this. Everything needs a location. So how do you specify a location? Well, a location on a storyboard usually means an X and a Y position. But there are different ways to establish an X and a Y position. Usually what you can do is you can set these two constraints, and that is kind of like an X and a Y position. This is your X, that 318. It tells you how far on a horizontal line you should go. That's the, the X axis. And then on the Y axis, you tell it you want it to be 216 down from the top. Okay, that'll work. But you can also establish on the x-axis, you can establish this constraint, which is a trailing constraint. And that will tell you on the x-axis that it should always be zero from the right. And that'll satisfy the, the x-coordinate. Now for the y-coordinate, I'll just click on this and say it'll always be 216 from the top. That's basically, I know it's going to go to the top because there's no other controls between it and the top of the screen. And it says right here, spacing to nearest neighbor. Well, the nearest neighbor is going to be my main view right here. So it's going to go straight up to the main view. So I'll add those two constraints. And now that's fine. It comes in and it looks great on the, the bigger and the smaller device. And for Journey, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to establish its position. So it's right next to the right margin. And notice this, though. Notice this number was like 200 something for the, the label. But now it's only 5.5. Well, that's because its nearest neighbor is this label right above it. So it's only 5.5 points to this label. And that's fine. We can use that. Okay, good. Now, I told you that every control needs a location and a size, right? But how come I didn't have to specify the size for these labels? And what I mean by size is like a height and a width. I didn't have to specify these two settings right here, these two constraints. Well, that's because Apple tells us that some of the controls will take care of their own size. And the label is one of those controls. It takes care of its own size, so you don't have to specify it. It just will size itself depending on the text that you have. Same with UI buttons. You don't have to specify size for UI buttons either. Okay, now I told you there are two main points. So that's one of them. Everything needs a size and a position. And I'm going to give you one more example for the size and the position. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a UI view. Oh, I spelled it wrong. UI view. 
There we go. And let's put that on there. And let's see what happens. So if I try to do the same thing, if I want it to stay up in this corner right here, and I set the same constraints as I did for the label, you know, this top constraint, so that satisfies the position, right? But now it's red. While the UI view cannot determine its own size. So we established the position or the location of the object, but we did not specify the size of the object. So that is why it's red. That's why we have some problems right here size and horizontal position are ambiguous for the view. Ambiguous means it needs something specific. It's too general. It can't figure it out. It needs more information. And the way you do that is there's a couple different ways. So what I could do is I could just hit the size and the width. <laughs> I'm sorry, the width and the height and add those two constraints. And you notice the error goes away. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's undo those last ones there. I'm just going to hit Command Z. There we go. Hit it again. Okay, and it's back. Well, another way I can set the width is by doing this. If I come here and I set this constraint over here, well, now the width, it knows it has enough information to judge the width because it's setting these two margins right here. The width is no longer a problem. So I can set that, but it's still red. And if I look at it now, the air is a little bit different. It says the height is now ambiguous. It can't figure out the height. It's too general. It needs more information. All right, good. So the only, there's two ways that we can do this too. I could come here and you guys can probably figure this out. You know, I'm going with this now. I can set the height and that will fix it. Or I can set this constraint to the bottom constraint and that will give it enough information to determine the size of the UI view. Instead, I'm just going to use this height right here. Okay, good. So that, that's fine. That, that set aside the constraint. Okay. So now I hope you understand that all controls need a size and position or a location and a size, you know, any way you want to look at it. It needs to know how big it is, height and width, and it needs to know where the location is on the screen, usually with like an X, Y coordinate or enough information to, to determine where it should fall on the screen. Second point is all the constraints that you set on all the controls have to eventually make it out to the view. Well, it's a lot of words. What does that mean? Well, take a look at this for example. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to clear the constraints off this UI view. And what I will do after that is I'm going to add some controls inside of it. So say we have a label. We'll put that inside here. Okay, so again, what I said was every constraint that you set has to eventually make it out to the root view right here. So if I set constraints in this for this label inside of this UI view, say I just want it in the center. Set those two, click add to. Well, we satisfied all the constraints that I told you for point number one, right? It has its size and its location. The size, the operating system will figure out and its location will always be in the center. What's the problem? Well, the problem is not with the label specifically, but the UI view. So now that the label has constraints that goes up to the UI view, well, now the UI view needs constraints that goes up to the root view. So every control on your storyboard, if it uses constraints, all constraints need to be connected eventually to this root view. And that's what we need to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'll set these three constraints like I had before, and I'll set the height. And now it satisfies it. And it's fine. It's happy that way. So what I usually do, here's, here's my strategy. Knowing that everything has to be connected to the root view, I usually start from the root view. And when I, if I need to set constraints, I start from the outside and I work my way in. So let's remove all the constraints here again. And okay, removed, removed it from the label, that's good. So normally what I would do is I would start with the objects closest to the view and set those constraints first like this. And then once that's looking fine and it looks good, you know, I look at the preview over here, that looks fine. I notice the label is now off a little bit. Here it's too far to the right, here it's too far to the left. I want it right in the center. So then after the view is set, then I work on everything inside of that view, all of its children. Oh, I didn't want this one. 
I want to do center it horizontally and vertically like that okay good so those are the two main things I want to really teach to you guys those two main points and those things will get you out of probably like I said 75 to maybe even 85 percent of your constraint problems if you know if you understand those two things so when you see like that ambiguous message just know that every constraint that you have set needs to eventually work its way all the way back up to the main view and if you get the ambiguous message you're probably missing some constraint along that hierarchy so just make sure you have constraints going all the way up to the main view and every object needs a size and position there are different ways to set the position there are different ways to set the size we're not going to get into it on this tip but I just want you to know that oh there's one thing that we forgot to do and that's with the image so let's delete this <laughs> just just to get that feeling of completion here now what I'm going to do for the image when I come up here you see a lot of these negative numbers and that is because you know if we look at the image let me click on that again you see the image actually goes outside the bounds of the, the screen and that's okay so what I'm going to do instead is setting these two will satisfy the X and Y coordinate it'll satisfy the position but it doesn't satisfy the width and the height now I could go with these two and this will work fine if I set those constraints right there or to establish the width and the height I can set these constraints and that will satisfy the width and the height because you know as the device changes it always knows it needs to keep these margins it has enough information to get the size so if I had those four constraints there you go you see now the relationship of the tree to the the borders they all match now okay good so that, those are the two main things I wanted to teach you guys every object needs a location and a size and not all controls on your storyboard will need a size it'll it can figure that out on its own and every constraint that you have needs to eventually make it out to the root view so just remember those two things and that should get you out of most of your troubles <laughs> everything else is just different ways of setting you know the height and the width or the X and the Y coordinates all right thanks guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up consider sharing it with anyone else that you know that might be having trouble with constraints or hate constraints because I know it was a, a big hassle for me that was one of my weak points when I first started iOS development and consider subscribing because I come up with these videos these tips every single Monday thanks guys